Hi, I am Ashley Mineta. I am the UX research lead for learners at OutSchool. And today I will be talking about how we developed a kid-powered self-directed learning platform at OutSchool. So at OutSchool, if you haven't heard of us, um, we offer online classes for learners. They're usually small live classes held over Zoom. And our core users tend to be um, between the ages of eight and 12, though we do have classes for children as young as three and as old as 18. Um, and what I, I love about OutSchool is that in addition to offering, say, traditional curricular classes, like a semester long third grade level math class, we also have a large community of learners who take interest driven courses. So um, one of my favorite conversations with a learner was with a, a 10 year old who lives in rural Utah. He told me that he recently got really into D&D and there were no other people in his town who wanted to play with him. So his mom went on to Facebook to try to find people and had no luck, but eventually found OutSchool. So she enrolled him in some games on OutSchool. And since then, he's uh, started to learn to be a dungeon master, so run his own games. And his biggest complaint to me about OutSchool is that while we have a ton of classes, we don't have any D&D ones about the specific set of rules he wants to play under. So, um, you know, it just uh, was really exciting to hear how he was able to develop his passion and find his people on OutSchool and to the point where I think he is running his own games off platform as well. Um, and, you know, the thing is about OutSchool though is, especially as we um, kind of, how, whether you want to frame it as come out of the pandemic or move into the later years of it, um, people are kind of burnt out on Zoom. Um, and we have been trying to think about other ways to engage our users. And in particular, we've been thinking about how to better embody our mission. Um, so OutSchool's mission is to make learning fun, social, and self-directed. But in practice, kids in OutSchool um, are mostly taking classes that are paid or they're joining asynchronous chat communities called groups, which are also paid. Um, we have some free general community groups for learners on OutSchool, but for the most part, kids are kind of, um, you know, their experience is guided by their parent um, at the end of the day who has to choose whether to pay for each experience, whether it be a class or a group. Um, and those experiences are led by teachers. And while we have a lot of excellent teachers and community leaders on OutSchool, we wanted to think about how we could remove some of those restrictions um, while still um, maintaining the, the safety and trust uh, families have in OutSchool. So we tried a few things. Um, one idea was to put class discovery into the hands of learners. So we have a designated area of the site designed for kids. Um, that's partly for, for COPPA compliance. Um, but you know, we thought while we're here with the kids, um, we could let them browse for their own classes and we tried to organize that search experience in a, a more learner-friendly way. Um, and we also added a program called Learner Allowances where parents could say, uh, fund an allowance for their learner and then their learner could search for and request classes uh, using their allowance. And, you know, both of those projects did just okay. Some of our, our really um, dedicated Power users um, saw value in them, and I would say even had previously requested features like these, but we found at scale, um, while they were somewhat successful, um, they didn't really seem to drive any new um, class purchases. And in particular, as just an example, learner allowances, I think about only 50% of learners ever even requested to use any of their allowance. Um, and when they did, a lot of times parents said that the, they as the parents still needed to check whether the timing of the class made sense, whether it was actually a fit for their child and, and so on. So it you know didn't really save any work for a parent and it didn't quite appeal to learners. So we decided to take a step back and speak to learners who did really love out school and, and see what, um, they loved about it so much. 
Um, and these conversations, uh, we had, I think about 10 of them to start. And um, we heard two big themes. Uh, the first theme was that learners love how social out school is. So uh, in particular, we spoke to one learner, Lydia. Um, she had just moved to Italy with her family and had been kind of disconnected from a lot of her friends from her brick and mortar school while her family um, got settled in. And, and so, you know, she said that she had been attending a lot of escape rooms on out school where she got to bond with and connect with other learners toward like a common goal. And her biggest request for out school was that we add a way for her to spend more time with the other kids on the platform before and after class. Another theme we heard was that learners really love to develop and share um, their interests on out school. So um, in this case, we, we had a learner uh, who was very interested in Jane Goodall, and she told me all about how she had created a research project to study her guinea pig's feeding behavior based off of Jane Goodall. And what was interesting about this learner is that unfortunately her teacher had a personal issue and had to drop out of running the class early. Um, but uh, this learner was so excited to tell me about her project and to finally have a uh, an audience to talk about it with and to, to get some feedback and comments on it. So we started to dig into those interviews uh, quote by quote. Um, and I, I won't spend too much time here, but um, we got together as a cross-functional team. I think um, as an aside, you know, our school is a place that is very much full of people from ed tech backgrounds, but um, not as many people who have um, thought about kids and learners and their free time and what might motivate and drive them to, um, to learn in their free time and, and the ways they might learn in their free time. So um, we took each quote from learners and broke it down. We did some kind of five whys analysis. We compared some of the things learners were telling us they like to do with some external frameworks like the qualities of free play from um, uh, Sonia Livingston's work with Five Rights. And uh, it was really inspiring, I think, for people to hear all the different ways that kids connected with um, play and the experiences they have. And just kind of, I think the, the uh, breadth of the definition of play was new to a lot of people. So we looked at those things and we said, okay, well, here's what we're doing at out school here's what we offer for kids, but here's what they actually wanna do. So on the right, you see kind of a bullseye diagram where we put um, what we thought were the most important tasks to a learner in the center and the least important at the edges of the ring. And we compared those to the interface and experience we had designed and found that there were a lot of gaps. And in particular, we weren't doing a ton to foster learners independent learning, say outside of a class or beyond once a say in that one case of the Jane Goodall class where a teacher might leave. Um, and we weren't doing a ton to foster uh, social interactions, um, especially once a Zoom class ended. So we started to kind of rearrange out school site. And in this example I gave to the team, um, we used Facebook as an example, but um, we looked at all the different things a learner could do on out school and just rearranged those into basic buckets that would be turned into screens and future prototypes. So um, in this case, for example, like I had mentioned that I don't really care about most of what Facebook does. I care about finding events on there though. And so I imagine what it would be like if Facebook redesigned itself specifically for me, um, where uh, the most um, salient and findable content was related to events and connections. So in, in other words, like what would OutSchool look like if the most uh, central parts were related to socializing or to independent study of interests and, and sharing of what one learns. We created a couple of prototypes based on that exploration. Um, one was uh, a social hub, which uh, as, as we like to say, turn social up to 11. So there's kind of this like lobby over here where you can hang out and chat before a class. There are community chats, there are literary magazines that you can contribute to. There's a feed of friends activity, friend groups and chats. And the other uh, version that we tested 
looked at out school as say a learning hub. So there were quizzes about trivia from topics you might have studied. Uh, there were short form videos to keep learning uh, about certain topics. And there was a way to showcase what you had learned and, and share your work. And also uh, over here, just kind of as a, a little um, aside was this idea of challenges. So we tested both those prototypes out. We handed them over to learners and let them navigate. And um, one of the first learners we spoke to actually asked to annotate the, the screens and we kind of encouraged that throughout the rest of the test. And she um, just pushed around things. And uh, what was interesting is that a few learners like her said, you know, this part of branding is really interesting. And this part of say challenges you can do is really interesting. Could you combine some of that, say like the idea of learning something new um, and trying something challenging um, with, uh, with some of the community aspects you have on here? So they were less interested in say the purely social things like say a lobby just to hang out with other kids in general. They were less interested in purely the content side of things like say videos and all that. Uh, and more interested in the way we could combine those together. And I should mention these were kind of like mid volume out school users who were using out school, but hadn't quite formed like a say weekly habit of using it yet. Um, so I'll pause and say like, this was kind of a, a sh this kind of led to a shift in how uh, out school thought about mastery, at least from a learner's perspective. So uh, I think originally, um, uh, the grown-ups at out school were thinking about mastery in the way that you might think about career development. Like, I am taking a ballet class, and next year I'll be picked for a lead role, and in a few years I'll be accepted at an arts high school. I think of this almost like the child actor <laughs> way of thinking about mastery, where maybe a grown-up notices a child's interest in something and translates that into uh, helping their child be the very, very best at it. Um, but what we found is that the way kids think about mastery is quite different. And it was nice to have these real world examples. Um, so kids in one sense want to master dabbling. They want to be able to flip in and out of things that attract them and follow their curiosity. And the path their curiosity takes will be different for every learner and difficult to predict. Um, so for example, one learner told me that she was taking ballet and from there she became interested in France. Um, and, you know, you could imagine that interest then turning into an interest in French pastries or um, French culture or French history, or maybe biography, the biographies of famous French ballerinas, like it could go in a lot of different directions. And, you know, with us having so many um, barriers between one topic and the next, just by the nature of each class and group being paid for, it was really hard for learners to fluidly navigate those emerging interests um, without having to say consult the grown up at each turn. Uh, this is in contrast to say something like YouTube, where a kid can kind of go down those rabbit holes um, guided by their own curiosity. Another way we started to think about mastery for learners is just inspiration and demonstration. So um, part of mastery is being able to learn from and demonstrate what you've learned. So um, in this case, maybe a learner takes a ballet class and a friend shows them a new dance and then they'll show them their version to get pointers. Um, and so while we had been leaning really uh, heavily on the side of trust and safety as a matter of like keeping learners within our class and only talking to learners they hadn't met before, we wanted to think more about like ways for learners to make unexpected connections or even to kind of keep up connections with people they had met in those classes uh, after they had ended. Um, so we started with small tests in the product. We, we liked this idea of challenges that learners had gravitated toward, but wanted to see how it scaled up. And one benefit of being at a kind of quickly moving startup is that we get to test these things in a granular way and we don't have to commit. We can kind of keep iterating. Um, so we put uh, for we took a week where we put a learner art gallery challenge on OutSchool's uh, learner landing page. About 2,000 learners saw this and contributed. And we then followed up with another test based on that where we put a new challenge up each day um, for a week. And the last two challenges were uh, 
pulled from learner suggestions. And we had some really promising initial engagement with both of these tests. Uh, one of my favorite examples is on the left here where a learner posted the way she draws eyes. Another learner said like, wow, that's way better than mine. And then the original poster said like, oh, yours looks good too, but um, maybe use some shading to make it pop. And the other learner was, uh, they kind of kept going back and forth and sharing as they went. Um, and so from since then, we've started to scale this up. Uh, right now, there's a OutSchool camp out running and every learner sees this when they log into OutSchool. Um, and they can create daily challenges or com complete daily challenges. And we've also layered in kind of a prize to uh, encourage learners to try and dabble in new things. So if you complete five of these, you get a new avatar on the site, um, which is related to the, the camp out. Um, one of my favorite challenges here is uh, the Go Birding one, which is created by an OutSchool educator. And, um, you know, a, a lot of kids participated in different ways, whether they're posting emojis or fun facts about birds or ones they've actually spotted in their, their neighborhood. And so in terms of what's next, like we are really interested in this idea of learner created challenges. We originally wanted this, you know, project to be uh, one that is inspired by and drives kids to lead their own learning process. And one thing we absolutely know is that as grownups, we don't even know all the things that learners want to know. Um, so in this example, a, a learner from one of our tests suggested a, a share a dish challenge where um, you share a dish from the country you're from or from your family and talk about its ingredients or how to make it. And um, she was really excited to be chosen and shared a dish from her family and we've been toying with this idea of a suggest a challenge feature for learners to uh, tell us new things. And I think, you know, recently I, I spoke to a learner who told me about how he really wanted to set up his own private Minecraft server and didn't uh, know how. So to me, that seems like a, a great example of a challenge I wouldn't have thought of, but um, could be really fun to add. And that's kind of where we are now. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, I think reflecting on this project, it was as much about uh, finding a way to help learners direct their own learning as it was uh, teaching grownups to think like kids.